Hey guys, my name is David Anderson. I heard you're a bunch of nerds here. Uh, guess what? I'm a nerd too. And today we're going to talk about why the <laughs> why the Star Wars prequels are much better than we imagined. For the record, the Star Wars prequels were a bunch of movies made by George Lucas, who made the original Star Wars. They're bad movies, but man, are they so much better than we imagined. And no one gives them the time of day. Well, here's the thing: the Star Wars prequels, starting with Phantom Menace, going to Attack of the Clones, and then Revenge of the Sith. The thing we don't really pay attention to with these movies is that these movies are the original trilogy backwards. That means the very first movie, Phantom Menace, is actually a retelling of the last movie, Return of the Jedi. So here we go. We start off, tiny spaceship flying up to the bad guy ship, exact recreation of the bad guys flying up to the Death Star. This is because uh, the Republic, who are the good guys in this first movie, will eventually become the villains later, and we're creating some parallels here. Okay. Here we go. We're coming in. So they fly in, here's some visual parallels. Bad guys look back, they're like, oh, who's coming? It's a big spaceship. Uh, transport. We get some shots of Jedi's walking in through this crenulated door here, mirroring Luke walking into Jabba's palace. That's because even on the plot level, Phantom Menace is a recreation of Return of the Jedi. We have Jedi going in, they are trying to rescue. Oh, here's some other visual parallels, more visual parallels. But the <laughs> Jedi are going in to rescue these politicians who are being captured by the bad guys. In Phantom Menace, we have Queen Amidala and her court. In Return of the Jedi, we have Han Solo being trapped in the palace of Jabba the Hutt. So we go through, here's some more visual parallels, if you care. Look at this, blah, 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 blah. These guys, big monsters, go in. We got guys sneaking around, hiding out. There's a rescue mission going on. All this stuff, man, this is not going by as fast as I thought wanted to. Second act, act two, we go to Tatooine. There's a speeder, just like on Endor in Return of the Jedi. Beat for beat, this is a recreation of this scene. And I am jumping ahead fast because I only got five minutes to do this, but believe me, it's way more complicated. Yes. By the time we get to Act 3, we see, in Phantom Menace, the Jedi Temple. Look at it, beautiful, in this city. What do you know? It happens to look exactly like the evil tower that the Emperor lives in on the Death Star. That is because the Jedi are actually just as bad as the Emperor is. <laughs> this, is the plot. this is the plot of the entire trilogy that nobody pays attention to. Look at this. Pretend you don't know the Jedi are heroes. Who would ever want to live in this room? This is a cold room. It's completely inhumane. That's because the Jedi don't believe in feelings. They believe in destroying all personal connections and everything that is human. All the things that the dark side actually encourages. Although the dark side encourages it to a homicidal level. So they're bad. Like, I'm not debating that. Uh, also, some other details. Uh, we see the exact same battle play out in Phantom Menace that we do in Return of the Jedi. Check out these catapults. Uh, well, man, look at all these spaceships flying around. There's an explosion. They're exactly the same. This thing is a Death Star inside of a donut. It's the exact same. <laughs> Everyone's cheering. This is so great. The bad guy just dropped down a giant pit. Oh, no, and look at this. The father figure dies, and the young kid is like, no, don't die. Don't die. And then let's burn him up. So that's Phantom Menace. By the time we get to Episode 2, Attack of the Clones, it's the exact same story as Empire Strikes Back. But... I don't have time to get into this, but take my word for it. It is the movie in reverse. Wow. <laughs> I don't have time. Just drink more. I'm absolutely serious. Just yeah, I also have to. Just that's just right. I drank a lot more. So, if you remember the movie Empire Strikes Back, it in the third act, it ends with Darth Vader setting a trap to catch Luke Skywalker so we can take him in terms of the dark side. Yeah. Attack of the Clones begins the exact same way with Anakin Skywalker, before he becomes Darth Vader, sets a trap to catch a bounty hunter, some dude, but he sets a trap. This is Anakin enacting what will later become some of his most symbolically evil gestures, but he's doing it as a hero because in the backwards world of the prequels, these, these evil acts are considered to be heroic. That's because the entire theme of the prequels is heroes not being able to recognize how evil they are. So we have a lot of similarities. So for example, we got Luke talking to Vader and Anakin up in the city and uh, mirroring each other. Luke jumps down a giant pit. Anakin jumps down the city because they're both, able to, uh, they're both able to enact these heroic gestures. But whereas Luke does this as a self-sacrificial act to protect the galaxy, Anakin does it because he's a show off. And <laughs> as we learn throughout these movies, the tiny little personality quirks that we have will end up having giant ramifications even generations later if they're not addressed. So we fall down, they, uh, you know, the characters go off, 
Uh, Obi-Wan Kenobi in Attack of the Clones goes to this Drake. rain. He goes to this rain city, <laughs> which looks identical to the cloud city in Empire Strikes Back, even on the inside. So they're walking around. There's a lot of parallels. Oh, look, they kiss because the creepy guy like hits on them to the point where they just like don't have any choice but to kiss them. They have uh, crazy dreams, evil visions. Even this city is basically just cloud city, but they're all clipping into each other because there's like a million of them. We got Jango Fett, Boba Fett, the exact same guy, just with the color remapping, flying through meteor or an asteroid field. All this stuff is going on, hiding on stuff. Oh, at one point, we get the hero encountering uh, a dark moment of the soul. Luke has to confront a uh, vision of Darth Vader. Anakin finds the dead body of his mother and murders everybody who does it. They both have this moment where they confront the evil within them. Anakin chooses to follow this later on because of the Jedi, he has very bad leadership, whereas Luke is able to confront this as a mature adult. Also, the very next moment is Yoda just kind of being like, what are you doing, you guys? So that happens. Also, C-3PO loses his head, and oh, boy, is it funny. OK. <laughs> uh, we have a lot of similar just like things going on here. Again, C-3PO in his head. Yeah, what hilarious. All right, I'm doing this. The exact same battle happens. Uh, can you get me some more of this wine? It is the uh, blackberry. It's oh, delicious. Is it's real good. It it's happening. If you notice, there's a there's a, a color shift happening throughout the movie. The colors are reversing. We have a giant battle. In one case, it's in a desert. The other one's a snow desert. They're flying around, yada, yada. We get a lightsaber battle. It looks exactly identical, like exactly identical. They both get their arms cut off. You Thank champagne. you. Oh, champagne. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> These so that happens. They're going off. By the end of this movie, the Republic looks identical to the Empire because they have fully embraced the evil within themselves. The Jedi have gone from peacekeepers to soldiers, all that great stuff. Look at this. They even end with a very similar shot. Now, I'm not even going to go into the third movie because I have, do not have enough time. I knew that setting this thing up. The idea here is at the end of the first movie, we have More a victory. Training. We have a victory. The good guys in these movies constantly win the battles, but they lose in the sense that they constantly give into their aggression and warmongering and all these things. They're perpetuating a cycle of war. And the reason that's important is because all of these movies create a cyclical narrative from beginning to end. It can be read forwards and backwards. And I didn't even get into every level. They can be read forwards and backwards. And as a guy, okay, no, yeah, drink. All right. <laughs> like I said, the oh, sorry, I have no more slides. Like I said, the Jedi only encourage, anytime Anakin is like, oh no, I have emotions and I love somebody. Like Anakin literally loves somebody and the Jedi are like, what is that about? Like that is all considered emotion and love and all of these human connections are considered the dark side. That totally screws Anakin up and he has no choice but to turn to the only people who will encourage these human emotions that the Jedi will not. And unfortunately, the only person who does that is the man who will manipulate those for evil and that is the bad guy. <laughs> the, whole, the whole thing that the prequels do is they recontextualize the original oh, movies. Hey. They recontextualize the original movies by saying maybe the dark side isn't all that bad because if they're both part of the force, they're both part of life. And therefore, we have to find a balance between these two. If you remember, Anakin is the chosen one who will bring balance to the force. But this is a misreading of the prophecy of who will bring balance to the force. The one who brings balance to the force is not Anakin Skywalker, it's Luke Skywalker. Because by the end of Return of the Jedi, what ends up happening is not that Luke returns the Jedi to their former glory. In fact, what happens is that Luke actually brings the Jedi to a state of glory that they themselves had never attained. Because Luke is able to, if you remember, Luke, uh, Luke goes against what the Jedi say every single time they, do, they tell him to do anything. They tell him, they tell him, you have to let your friends die. He says, no way. My, my friendship is more important than your stupid Jedi laws. They tell him, you have to literally go murder your father face to face. And Luke is like, that's crazy. And they're like, oh, uh, well, that's what the Jedi, that's, we're Jedi, so you have to do it. And it looks like, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to make him love me. Luke does this. Luke, according to the prequels, is a horrible Jedi. But Luke is the only one who is able to synthesize the positives of the dark side and the positives of the light side and find a balance. Luke brings balance to the force, destroys the cycle <laughs> of war and peace. And the prequels have been telling us this narrative the whole time. Nobody wanted to see it because unfortunately, they're very bad movies. <laughs> there we go.